Welcome to MMO Grinder's SideQuest, where I take a look at early open or closed betas, subscription trials, and simpler titles, giving you a quick first impression. Today I'll be looking at Dead Island Epidemic, a mix of an action RPG and MOBA now available as a closed beta, and based off of the fairly polarizing Dead Island franchise. If you can look past that game's reputation, you might actually find an entirely different experience here. The game looks pretty decent, nothing groundbreaking, but enemies and players are easily identified once you understand who is who and what is what, which is always a good point in the favor of this kind of game. As a closed beta, there's only a few map locations to look at, which is actually pretty generous for this kind of game, considering map variety isn't exactly well known to the genre. The game's tone eschews any form of serious tone as well, which is, from what I understand, a refreshing change for the bait-and-switch of the original game and its infamous trailer. In this case, it seems to really suit the game well, as the burly character able to wield logs in various forms as special attacks is referred to as a Lumbermancer. Another character's sole excuse for being a good combatant is that she's really fond of fighting games, going as far as having her do a Street Fighter-style hurricane kick as a special attack. Even looking in the background can reveal some amusing scenes, like the corpse on the photocopier with his pants around his ankles, who apparently spent his final moment on Earth now endlessly Xeroxing his ass. Then, of course, it's the fact that this game's initials intentionally spell die, and it's more than keen to remind you of this fact. Music consists of tribal and heavy drum beats, and pretty intense to match the action in seemingly endless hordes of zombies, and the overall sound is decent, but pretty loud by default, so expect to lower the volume a bit if you don't want to shout over the game to your teammates if you're using any kind of voice over IP. There's a bit of decently done voice acting as well. Unlike any MOBA in the traditional sense, this game is available in both a PvE and a PvP playstyle, and I'm not talking about bot matches. PvE matches consist of a Diablo meets Smash TV style of gameplay, where you can walk in any direction with the WASD keys, and aim in a direction and attack with the mouse, and use the hotkeys Q, R, E, and F for your various MOBA style skills. The F key reserved for your character's ultimate. When starting out, you'll only be able to use two of those skills until you grind enough points in your character's level to earn the remaining two. When playing in PvE, just choose Horde Mode in one of the three difficulty levels. You'll fight the various points and gates, starting events that you'll have to survive until you reach the final boss, which can be fairly interesting and challenging fights with mechanics that you might not pick up on right away. Once you've managed to get a handle on the game and gain those last two powers, you may also want to try the PvP mode, which, again, doesn't play like any traditional MOBA on the market, spawning three teams of four on three corners of a map, and forcing each team to fight their way to the middle before they can start gathering and capturing resources. Gain enough resources in time and you'll win the match. But even if you don't win first place, the game will go on with the remaining two teams so that they can duke it out for second place. Events in the middle can range from point captures to boss spawns to further gain an edge in resources and provide a few points of player contention. As a warning, this game is very unforgiving with AFK players, as I found out on accident today when I got up for around a minute of my time to answer the door, only to get back to my PC in time and find out that I'd been booted from the match with a fairly harsh warning that repeated offenses would not go unpunished. While a pretty welcome system in these kind of games, if you have to take a phone call, have an RL emergency, or have to use the bathroom any time during the 20-30 to 30 minute matches, you might want to prepare accordingly before you commit to one. There's only four survivor characters in the game, but with different versions of them available to unlock, Armored and Mutant. For example, Isis is a speed melee character, but the Armored version of her gives her the ability to drop turrets and toss out grenades, while her Mutant version gives her a lifesteal and debuff ability. The mutant versions of the characters tend to cost far more points to unlock than the armored or standard, however. You can also swap weaponry, both on the fly in-game to switch between a ranged or melee weapon with C, or swapping that weapon entirely with a crafted weapon that you can unlock with blueprints that drop from playing the game. Certain characters have certain weapon specialties, but none are locked out of using any certain type. To create more powerful weapons, you need to increase your account level. It's really hard to gauge the community in this game, especially as an invite-only closed beta, as I played my entire time with a few friends who also had access. However, we did have a baffling moment where someone from the enemy team complained that we killed them, in a moment of gamer entitlement that I've not seen at this level in quite a while. However, whether or not this kind of strife exists between teammates isn't clear. A lot of the general points of contention that you would see in MOBAs isn't in this game. You can choose multiples of the same character. There's no last-hit mechanics for experience. There's no gold to earn and match to buy items that would better augment your stats. You just collect supplies, drop them off, and try not to die. It's a refreshing change in this Dota clone-infested market. There seems to be a lot of items you can purchase in the game. While there are things that are character or account level locked, 
It could put things into a power purchasing perspective once all of the cash shop systems go live. It's also taking a page from the World of Tanks book by placing a bit of your earned experience into a pool that you can unlock with your cash shop currency to place earned experience from one character into others if you don't play them as often. The change of the game dynamic once the cash shop goes live is probably something to watch out for, but right now it doesn't seem like it'll be a game breaker, it just has the potential to be one. I was really, really surprised just how much fun I was having playing this game, and once we figured out a few of the more confusing mechanics, we found ourselves wanting to keep playing. Despite the infamous reputation of the Dead Island franchise, I didn't go in with any expectations, and I'm confident in saying that I actually quite enjoyed what I've played of this title so far. I'm intrigued how this game will fare once it goes fully public. Those interested in the game should check out DeadIslandEpidemic.com and sign up for the closed beta. This has been an MMO Grinder side quest, and it's time I logged out.